Hi, Mickey. Thanks for joining me this morning. Hello. Um, can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your involvement with the creative arts? Um, right. So I'm Mickey Rogers. I am um, currently um, curator, well, community curator at Tees Valley Arts. Um, and gosh, my involvement with the creative arts. I've had a bit of a long involvement with the creative arts um, in different ways. Um, I've always made stuff um, since I was little. I used to make <laughs> I used to make gloves when I was at school and sell them. I used to make them and and like stitch pictures of Snoopy on them and sell them to people. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I suppose I've, my route more recently is um, I, I I set up a community arts business years quite a few years ago. And that evolved into a venue where we did like art sessions and um, we worked with people who um, had special educational needs and we had a tea shop and all sorts of stuff. And for, for various re reasons, we couldn't carry on with it, partly because of funding and because the people that we worked with, the organisation we worked with closed. Um, and then I ended up... Um, been off with the job at Tees Valley Arts as project officer, which is basically what my job is. But I mean, my, the name of my role changes. Um, so we work with um, communities across the Tees Valley um, and we use the arts as a vehicle for change, basically. Um, and it's all, it's very much about, um, I don't know, we use it a, a bit, it's a bit like the old, um, in Middlesbrough, there used to the, there was a place set up called the Athenaeum, which is like a sort of like the Lytton Lytton Fill in Newcastle, and it was a place for um, people to be able to learn and talk, and it was set up for everybody. The idea was that it didn't matter what class you were or where you came from; that everybody had this in in them. They just needed the voice, so. There is a little bit of what we do that is about that. It's about going, you know, here's the platform for everybody in the world to be able to have a voice. If if we can, you know, if we can find something that 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 sort of suits you, um, and we can get the funding, then we'll do it. But by the same token, what we don't do is just go. There's a bit of funding. Let's do this. We try and keep to our community, so we don't go. The old sort of standard of community arts was you got a bit of funding and you worked with the school or you worked with whoever and then you you moved on and you, you like but we, we don't do that what we do is we continually work with the same communities so it's it's a it, it's a, a case of building on those communities and then linking the communities together so that we never just sort of go in you know there's a there's always a point to it it's never just a token tokenistic sort of piece of work um yeah so we've who've I worked with I suppose like everybody male prisoners we worked for a year in the two male prisons we last year I spent most of the year doing a film project across the Tees Valley so we worked with um young people who were you know from a, a girl in East Cleveland who had a cow to a Syrian refugee in Hartlepool to a filmmaker who wanted to just do more, but needed, you know, support, skateboarders, surfers, you know, like everyone, um, a, a, like a girl that's um, works in um, in as a school support, but is actually a fantastic, also a fantastic writer, who wanted to make a film to go with her writing, all sorts of things. So that's you know, the sort of thing that we do. And then obviously we've got the lockdown, so it's all come to a bit of a grinding halt because working with communities has been very difficult. But now we're in the um, the hub in Redcar on the seafront in the Palace Hub, which has given us lots of opportunities. And we've, we're having a bit of a, a sort of thinking, you know, like we're applying for things, we're having a bit of thinking time where we adapt that to our communities and how we work with them virtually really um because every time we have an idea of we could let people in in this way then it all changes so we you know so all our projects are 
you know, virtual basically. And we and we will be at the moment. We're just about to get a camera so that we can do a virtual gallery. So we can have gallery show. We've had a gallery show, but we put it in the window. But so we can have gallery shows basically. Great. Um, I'm wondering if you know. I think it's um, dovetail joints. Um, uh, they have a new kind of um, online 3D virtual gallery um, project that they're working uh, with various people on. And right, yeah, I've heard about them, yeah. yeah it's just, you know, about it just um, uh, brings it, uh, the idea of going to a virtual gallery a bit more into, into sort of real life. So yeah, yeah. Not immersive, but it, it feels quite immersive. And it's yeah, definitely. A great way to work. Um, I love I love the fact that um, uh, you're very much aware of um, the idea of um, working with communities being um, something that doesn't end and mm. that, that it's not just oh we're gonna we've got this great idea and we're gonna come and do this art thing yeah and, and we're come to do art <laughs> yes and then kind of <laughs> going right. on oh we did brilliant art and we did the art <laughs> yeah um, exactly yeah. Uh, because yeah, unless it's unless it's something that's seen as is going on forever, then I I don't think you can uh, make real change. Um, and no. yeah, I the, I really love the the films that you made. Um, um, I didn't really you know I only just found out that they they were yours, and um, I found them really inspiring because it's you know again it's just um, enabling people to tell their own stories rather mm. than saying oh we 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 know this and listen <laughs> we want to make a film about. Yeah, yeah. In our way, um, it's just uh, yeah. Um, there's been too much of that, and I think it's heartening to see that the the arts council have uh, seemed to have cottoned on to this idea that a lot of their projects might um, uh, might not have brought the kind of lasting change that they were hoping for. Yeah. Um, it looks like funding might be geared a bit towards that more in future, which is hope so. Yeah, hope so. Absolutely. Um, so, um, so you you say like you know you're kind of a little bit of an artist on Twitter as a kid. Um, it sounds like you've always been involved with the arts. Why is that? What? Why do you think that? Why do you engage with the arts? What do you think is is so important about arts to individuals and to society more generally? Um. <clears throat> For me personally, it was always an escape. So uh, without going into it too much, I had quite a difficult childhood. Um, and m my dad was an art lecturer um, and I was the sort of designated artist in the family. I think, you know, that just the fact that, that I, I was the one who was interested in drawing, but I used to draw all the time from being like four. I would just take like a, a, a sketchbook and a pencil everywhere with me and I remember drawings that I did from being little I remember those drawings you know um so I've always drawn um and you know I can draw really quite well I'm not the best in the world you know I'm not like an amazing artist but people will say to me how do you how, how do you oh god your drawings are great well I've just done it a long time that's all it's not like I'm like some magic person that's you know, I don't have this amazing talent. It's just, I've just done it a long time. It's like, you know, like anything else, mu great musicians just practiced a lot. Um, and I've always really liked making things. Um, and, and I think, you know, I was quite quiet at school. People won't believe that because I've got a right mouth on me. You know, I can talk for England. Um, but I was really quiet at school and quite s sort of, um, I, in, you know, sort of kept myself to myself especially primary school going into secondary school and actually my best friend at primary school was elective mute so she is we're really still really good friends she's not elective mute now but we you know she she so I used to speak for her so the two of us were a right sort of like pair you know I didn't speak very much but I, I also spoke for her and we were yeah an unusual pair at school definitely and then I went to secondary school and it was just I don't know it was awful but the thing was that I could make things so I sort of I well I was I, I used to make things like I'd make fingerless gloves at secondary school and then stitch pictures of Snoopy on them and then sell them um and it was I suppose then it was a way of going look you know I've got a place in the world um you know thinking back to it it, it was a bit like you know I've got a purpose 
Um, so I think like to me, making stuff seems to be my, you know, one of my, my purposes is either sort of making stuff or, you know, sort of working with community. So working with communities, making stuff is like my ideal job, obviously. I'm, this is my, it really is. I really do do my dream job, I have to say, because it because it's everything that I love in the world is I love people and I love making things and I facilitate making things with people. So that's, you know, it's ideal, it's great. Um, Terrific. So yeah, so I've always made stuff. And, and then I, you know, went into sort of making my own stuff, having stalls, you know, doing markets. And I've still got, I've got a tea business still. So um, from making things, I, I, I also love tea. <laughs> So from making things to that that were sort of vaguely tea inspired, then I then I had a tea shop for a while, and then that seemed to make sense that I would actually blend my own tea. So that's what I do. I blend my own tea, and I'm and I make things to go with it. So, um, yeah, so I'm still making stuff and just crocheting all the time for absolutely no purpose whatsoever. Things that really don't ever get finished, but you know I quite like doing it while I'm sitting watching the telly. So yeah, yeah. And really interesting there because you kind of cover the whole spectrum of um uh, just creating for your own sake because it's something that you enjoy to um are uh, offering a sense of place and purpose in the world to um facilitate in others to to participate in all of that but and i'm so pleased for you that you've um managed to get yourself into a position where You've got a really important, worthwhile job that you love doing. I just think mm. it's, um, I, I, it's everyone, a real everyone should be, you know, everyone should be working towards that. Yeah. Uh, if we just sort of took kids and said, what, what's your passion? Mm. What do you want to do with your life? And then found ways to facilitate that rather than yeah. Into, yeah, yeah. into little boxes that they don't want to go in. Um, things might be very different and um certainly in terms of mental health um certainly in terms of um what needs to be done what's worthwhile to do yeah um, uh yeah so yeah definitely for that that was uh, and i think i think like uh, going back to sort of mental health when it was the first lockdown i was furloughed and I, I'll fully admit I have like on on and off mental health problems you know I think anybody I mean most of us have on and off mental health problems it's just health isn't it it's like saying I've got on and off stomach problems or whatever you know get headaches or whatever um and they have been quite serious at times but when the, in the pandemic I did have a real sort of mental health blip and and I think for me it was like um, there were things going on my daughter was moving out and and stuff so she'd moved in with her boyfriend and then she was you know sort of it was my, my son's birthday and she came home and said that she was like I'm getting a flat you know it was all this sort of like all oh, right okay and I think you know that's worked out great and I get on really well with her and she's amazing but at the time I sort of felt really useless because I couldn't do the market so I wasn't the tea lady and I couldn't do my job so I wasn't you know that person that you know was doing you know I wasn't busy and I was trying to find things to do so I've done all sorts I've made scrubs I've, I've made masks do you know what I mean I'd set things up online um, for people to join in with you know I, I did almost like too much to try to try and film my time but it was it wasn't like it was just stuff that I was going like does anybody want to do this you know it wasn't like um with real I don't know it was with people but it wasn't I wasn't seeing anybody I think that was it I was just seeing my son who had been furloughed and had just come back from Leeds because he was you know in between houses so didn't really have anywhere to live and couldn't afford to live because his furlough money was rubbish um and my husband and that would be it and I wouldn't see anybody else and I just found it really it destroyed me I think it it, I, it got to a point where it, where I just couldn't you know I honestly really found it hard to cope and ended up in hospital because I was so ill with my mental health it just went it went downhill um so fast um and the things that you know the things that kept me okay were still making things um you know when I was like you know you just need to make stuff then that then that was that was what kept me going but that but 
I think we all need to sort of feel like we've got a purpose. And it, and it never ever really occurred to me that I needed that until that happened. And, and I just felt like I, I, I was like, well, what, you know, what's the point of me then, really? I just couldn't get rid of this thought that, like, you know, what's the point? What's the point of me? Like, what is the point of me, you know, being on the planet if I can't help people and I'm not needed? You know, you know so I felt like my daughter didn't need me, which was, you know, wrong. But, um, and I, you know, wasn't not needed at work. It's just that it, that's what had to happen at that time. But I couldn't do the markets and that was really difficult because, because the markets are something that I just absolutely love. It's like, I would have done them and paid for it and sold nothing, you know, just to be out there and sort of see people. Yeah, thanks for being um, so honest about that. I think um, uh, the stigma of um, mental health issues, thankfully, seems to be lifted um, mm. in, in recent years. I think we all do suffer um, I think I've kind of had the opposite in, in lockdown because I, I've been working from home for like nearly five years now and I hadn't realised until it was lockdown and I had my husband and my kids around me um, so much how kind of miserable and alone I was by working from home and not going out and not seeing people at all Yeah. Um, and how important that is. So that is my, um, I don't do New Year's resolutions, but I said this year of every day I'm going to get out uh, of the house and have a walk, even if it's just a little walk around the green. And yeah. it's paid huge dividends already. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, because you have to get dressed and you have to like look present. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And even if it's just waving to, you know, Jean from down the road from across the green, it's 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 all it's all um, worthwhile and um, and kind of, yeah, grounds you in, in, in your life. And yeah, and you know, we don't know what we're facing. We don't know when we're going to be out. No. Uh, so we do what we can and, you know, just need to be there for, for one another and um, help and support each other in, in the way that we can. And I think that the arts is a brilliant way that, that mm. we can do that. So, well, thanks for talking to me. It's been absolutely lovely. And um, I can't wait to, you know, have uh, get out and meet you in the real world. Yeah, have a real coffee in the real world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but let's keep in touch in the meantime. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe lay some plans together. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.